share and review. I don't know what I have done here. I need a mess. Okay, do you see my screen? Yeah, you could see it now. Okay, perfect. So this is the program, guys, that uh, I was talking to you. So this is my polyval. Uh, and what it does is requires two, two arguments, right? P is my polynomial, and V are the values that are going to be used to evaluate the polynomial. Right? So if you start testing with this one here, so the, the way you call this one here is first to create these values in, in MATLAB, right? These vectors. So let's create this one here. Let me clean this one. Okay, so I have the, the, the vectors, and then what I will do is I will do this one here. And as soon as when I ask you evaluate this one here, you need to use the, the stops, okay? Okay, so let's let's take a look to what happens if I stop here. Okay, line nine. So wait a second. So let's let's make this stop here first. Let's see what's going on. So P, where's P? Oh yes, of course I cannot run from here, guys. I need to run from here. Yeah, now I have P, then I have B, correct? So what I'm saying is, okay, create X, the values are going to start at the first value B, uh, they are going to go to the second value B, and the number of uh, numbers that I have in between, I want 100, got it? So P is my, my, my polynomial, and then what I do, remember this is a polyval, is simply I need to give first the polynomial, and all the values of X that I want to, to test or to evaluate. And then the, this one here is simply, I'm oh, sorry, what I done. It is simply a subplots, et cetera. So let's take a look. Here's what we have. Do you agree? Any questions, guys? It's, it's very simple to understand. I'm doing, I'm doing the, I'm evaluating the function. I'm graphing. This is a function. This is a graph of the function I, I, I gave here. This is my polynomial third degree. So this is a graph. Then what I'm doing is I'm, I'm doing a, a poly, I'm de taking the derivative of P. So you can see D. This is the derivative of P. Then I'm evaluating the derivative on the same values. And then as, as you can see, so this is my function, my original function. And this is the derivative of my function. Do you agree? So my, my, the derivative, remember, is the slope of the function. So the beginning it starts decreasing, 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 decreasing until it arrives to a point of zero, and then it starts increasing, increasing, increasing. Do you see that? This is the point. This is my, my derivatives. Make sense to you? Just for, for practicing, but make sense to, to you what we have done? Yeah, so it makes sense. Okay, perfect. So now let's start talking about a linear uh, interpolation. Yes. Professor? Yes. I actually had a question about one of the M files you gave us from last class. So you want me to wait for the end until that? Or uh, which I ask M file? That? Yeah, which M file? Um the the temps example save one. Tapes example save one. Okay, so let's open that one. Temps this one. Yep. Wait, not, not the actual, it doesn't have save one. It actually has save 2023. Oh, the so save 2023. Yeah. yeah. Stamps save 2023, yeah. Yep, here we go. Okay. So I understand what you were trying to do in terms of the XLS writes and XLS read. 
But yeah. I was just confused on, I guess, the placement of all the quotation marks. Like, I didn't know which ones were just single quotes, double quotes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yes, there yes. were a lot of them together. Because, yeah, no, I agree. And, and remember, uh, let me check another one that has a, that we are, we are not, I want one that we save regularly, like nothing. Mm. I want to save somewhere. I want to see the one. Yeah, so this is a, the tricky part here. It's not tricky, but you need to be careful on what we do here. So take a look to what we do here. Okay. Ah, I need to open directory. I need to run this device. Okay, so now I, I can I can take a look to this one here. I want to show it. Now, remember that if you want to write this by hand, okay, this is the way you write, right? Stamps equals XLS. You see that we need to have a, an apostrophe here that closes here. Remember, because this is text. For MATLAB, this is text. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that's why we need to have one apostrophe here and one apostrophe here, okay? So this is the first thing you need to realize. Moreover, when you write sheet one also, you need to have an apostrophe here, an apostrophe here. Make sense? So that's what you try to replicate. So now take a look to what happened. Uh, this one here is easy because up to here, do you agree? What I'm doing is, is this part here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it? But now I need to create an apostrophe for, for, for the directory. You see this? I need to have this one here. Oh, so it's like an apostrophe within the phrase itself. Yes, so, so we need exactly. So we need to create an apostrophe of, of an apostrophe. Directory is a, it starts at C. Sorry, where's my my directory? You know, my directory is this part here. But I need to add the, the apostrophe. So this is my apostrophe of the apostrophe. This apostrophe is is going to create this apostrophe. Got it? Then project name. Project name. The project name is this one here. It, it, it doesn't come with apostrophes. The project is simply this one here. MATLAB presents with apostrophes because it tells you it's a, it's a chart, character. But you need to create your apostrophe. So XLSB, well, this is a, an apostrophe, so this is okay. Then I need to have an, uh, I need to put a comma also, this one here. I need to put this comma. So the commas, they need to also be in, 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 in apostrophes because this is text. So what we're telling MATLAB, look, this one here is text, okay? So text goes apostrophe, apostrophe. Moreover, I need to have at the end of this one here, I need to have this apostrophe, correct? So I need to have apostrophe, apostrophe. Do you, do you agree? And then what do you say? Sorry, Wait, sorry, is... go that that last part. So. Yeah. You have the dot XLSB is this is an apostrophe. This is text. So you okay. need to tell MATLAB this is text. So that's why you do apostrophe, apostrophe. So this is text. Correct? Yes. Now I need to also create one apostrophe as text. So the one apostrophe as text is created like that. So the first apostrophe, the second apostrophe, tell MATLAB what is inside is text or character. So what is inside apostrophe? You see that? So that's why it will create this apostrophe. Make sense? Okay, but you also have the comma inside an oh, apostrophe. Oh yeah, that because this one, yeah, because the comma is also an, uh, a text. So this one here controls for, oh, what is inside is a text. Got it? So when you have apostrophe, you want to put apostrophe, you, you only need one apostrophe more, like here, these two, these two create this apostrophe, correct? Oh, uh, okay. I see. Yeah, uh, these two create this apostrophe. And then sheet one, we have an issue with sheet one too, because, okay, uh, the, the comma is, is another, another uh, character. I need to create this apostrophe here. I need to create two more. You see, for this apostrophe, for this one. And then we see this one, this one I'm saying, and then I need to tell MATLAB 
also sheet one is a is a is text. So sheet one is, is going to appear this part here. And then I need to create two apostrophes. That is basically this apostrophe. And then also this part here, this part here is text. And it will create this part here. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah, it's simply some. Yeah, this is very at the very beginning. It's very confusing, but later once you start using this stuff, you you're gonna see that this, it makes a lot of sense. Everything that is in apostrophe is text for MATLAB. So, for example, this apostrophe implies all this part here is text, or this part here, up to here. The issue comes when I need I need to add an apostrophe because if this apostrophe is not here, I can simply put everything in a single apostrophe, right? Then I have an apostrophe. This is my apostrophe. Apostrophe is creating this one here. Then directory is this part here. Up to up to here. Project name is this one here. I'm sorry, project name is, is up to here. This is this part here? Then I need to add another text that is this part, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. Okay. So this one is, is extremely useful, really. This this property of, of creating like this is extremely, extremely beautiful because you can create whatever you want. You don't need to be copying and pasting the directory. You can you can have the project name written immediately, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's very straightforward. You need to learn this. This is part of, of your learning in uh, when you start working on this stuff. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. Okay, guys. Uh, so now what we are going to be doing is uh, let me minimize this one here. Let me minimize this. Come on. Let me clean this one here. So now let's start working, guys, with a linear interpolation. Okay. So let's create two variables. Let's create x1 and x2. So let's say x1 equals clean space. Mm, I know zero comma uh, to two times pi, and let's assume that we do hundred observations. Okay, and let's create x two to be the same. But what I will do, I will just have six observations. Okay. So what I'm doing, guys, is creating from zero to two pi. The only difference is that I'm I'm making here hundred observations, and here only six observations. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. And linear interpolation, guys, you need to remember that the more the points you have, the better the, the linear the linear interpolation. Okay, so just to take a look to how this works. The, the plot does linear interpolation. When we use plots, it does linear interpolation. So for example, let's say x1, sorry, I will plot x1 sine of x1. And I will say x2 the same, sine of x2. And perhaps this one, something like that. Take a look to what happens with the, with the interpolation, guys. The more lines, the more dots that you have, the smoother is your function. You see that? The blue one. The less points that you have, the, the, the linear interpolation looks very robotic, very straight, straight, for, straight lines. And so this is the first thing you need to remember.
Okay. So let's, how do you close all the graphs? I want to close all my graphs. How do I do that? Of course, you can click in, in each of the, of the graphs, but if I want to click from, I want to close everything from here, it's simply close all. Okay. Actually, so, I actually have a question. So yeah. I know that Claire the workspace, it's clear all. Is there a way to clear like the command window also? Or is that oh, a yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You go to the home here. Mm -hmm. And then you have clear commands. Oh, okay. All right, thanks. Got it. And then it cleans your, your screen because sometimes you, you get so many crap that you want to delete that. Okay, guys, let's do a let's do a, a simulation. Okay, so let's do hours. It's going to be one to twelve. So I have twelve hours in a day. And what I will do is I will create temps, just random, random temperatures. Okay, so five, eight, nine, fifteen. 25, 29, 31, 30, 22, 25, 27, 24. Let me see how many I have. 26, 95. Okay. So let's assume, guys, that there's, uh, these are Celsius, okay, temperature in Celsius. These are the hours and these are the temperatures in a, in a given day. Got it? So let's, let's plot what we have. So basically, this is my temperature. So I will plot hours. Temps, and it's not about this comma. And I want to also do hours, temps. And what I will do is I will just do this one here is going to provide me a cross in each of the points, in each of the, the, the scatters. Oh, not yours. Why you wrote yours out here? Here you go. Do you see? So my temperature, uh, the first one is, you know, these are all my temperatures during the day, right? And so what I've done here, guys, actually is the linear interpolation. You see that the plot command does linear interpolation. Now, imagine that I want to know what is the, the, the expected or the linear interpolation of, uh, of the temperature, let's say, at, at 9, you know, 920, okay? So the command is going to be interp1. You put the x, so x is hours in our case, temps, and 920 is 9.3, for example. So at 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9. A nine something, my, my expected temperature, guys, is going to be around uh, 22.9. You see that, this temp here? I can do interpolations also, not only on, on the single number, but for example, I can say a 3.2, a 6.5, I don't know, 7.1, at 11.7, at 9 point, uh, well, I can also do this stuff. So what I'm doing is I'm tell me based on the data that I have, what is expected linear interpolation? What is my expected temperature based on a linear interpolation uh, that of temperature at, at these hours? Okay, here we go. So it's gonna be 10.2 centigrade in the morning, 30 at 6.5, 30.9 and 71, uh, 24, 90 at 11.7. Make sense? It's very simple. Now, there is another way, guys, that is more, you know, instead of linear interpolation, what we can do is something is called a, linear, a cubic interpolation. Okay, so take a look to what, what is the difference between this guy and this guy. You see that? So the, the cubic spline basically is, is smooth better the, the data. Okay, the, sorry, the, 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 the interpolation. It is not a linear interpolation. This is a cubic interpolation. This is called a spline. And it's, it's smoother. So it's much better, much beautiful, much everything. Okay, just to show you something, just to show you how this works. Let's take a look. So assume, guys, that I will have H1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 12. So what I'm doing here,
what I'm doing here? Uh, you're just making a vector that starts at one, jumps yeah. by 0 0.1 and ends at 12. Perfect. Okay, and what I will do is I will create my T. Let me create my, yeah, I will create this one here, but now instead of uh, hours, well, it's going to be hours, temps. I want this to be our, um, yeah, let's do hours, temps. Yeah, you just want to, to see the crosses. And then I want, H with sorry guys no I don't want that I want to interpolate hours temperature and I want this one here sorry so basically what I'm saying is interpolate using hours and temperatures using all these possible hours and do is an spline. Okay, so now I, I, I can do a plot. I can do a plot of hours, temps, perhaps I can do this. I want to have hours, temps, and I want H and T. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to represent the real data. So this is going to be, my linear interpolation is going to be a line. The, this cross is simply the, the union between, for example, a one, five degrees, two, eight degrees, et cetera, just to clarify this one here. And this one here is my, my spline, spline interpolation, that is cubic interpolation. Here you go. You see the, the green one is what a plot does, is linear interpolation. And what cubic interpolation does is it smooths the function doing a cubic spline, cubic function. Basically, you see, it's, it's a smoother in terms of how the temperature should vary. Now, guys, empirically, the, what is interesting is that spline is well used, and splines are better approximations than linear approximations. Okay, so the people use use splines more than linear interpolation. So the command that you need to remember when you want to do interpolation, guys, is simply inter interp one. Okay, so now what I, I need to, under, we need to understand guys in, in economics, in finance, we always do the integrals to find areas. And also we do the derivatives, okay? So that's, that's what we always in economics or calculus is always derivatives, always integrals. Okay, just to start and, and what is called, what the, the way we call that one here is, is called numerical analysis, All right? So let's do a little numerical analysis for you so you can have a lot of good library on how numerical analysis work. There is a beautiful command in, in Excel, guys, that is called the F plot. Okay, the F plot is gonna, is gonna plot a function. And how do you call a function? You call the function with, with a rova, with at. Let's use HAMPS. HAMPS is a, is a given MATLAB uh, function. And this means simply, please plot a function. The function name is HAMPS in the interval zero comma two. Take a look to what happens. Where's my function? Here we are. So in my interval zero comma two, and this is a function hamps. We're gonna create our own functions in a minute. But the way you call a function guys is you simply put aroba at, and it should work it. Okay, so let's create a function ourselves. So let's imagine, let's create uh, the following function, okay? So let's create, um, I know, f plot. Sorry. My variable, I will write my function here. My variable is going to be called x. And let's assume there's going to be my function two of exponent 
uh, minus x, sorry, let's say minus x. It looks like a normal distribution. Well, with a sign of let's do this time sign of x. This is whatever, guys. I'm just creating something. Okay, so I have a function. You see that? This is my function. When I write the function inside the f plot, I need to tell MATLAB which one is my variable. And I'm telling what is my variable in this way. So f plot, my variable is x, and this is my function. And do this graph in the interval 0, 0,8. Okay, so what we can do here then, see my graph. This is what I have created. This is my function, uh, two exponent to the minus x time of sine of x. This is a beautiful command, guys, because in, in economics, always we have functions. We always graph or always have a functional functional forms, okay? And sometimes we have no clue how the function looks in a given interval. MATLAB provides you a fantastically easy way of doing that. You simply do, what is my variable? You create your function and you tell MATLAB, okay, in which, in which interval you want to graph it. And that's it. For example, we can create another one. So let's create another one, another function, okay? Let's create, for example, x squared minus two times x plus three, let's say in, in the intervals here of three, for example. Do you understand what I'm doing? Is x is, this is a quadratic function. x squared times, no, no, times, plus two x plus three, evaluate this one in the, in the interval zero three. Yeah, this is a plus. So you know what, why don't we do? Because this is going to be infinite function. Perhaps like this, let, let me see what we have here. Yeah, perhaps like that. So I have a minimum here, so. What is that? If not, um, nine two hundred. Yeah, forget about that. Simply, you can graph whatever you want. Make sense? Yes, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. So f plot is one function we're going to be using all the time, guys. When you have functions, use f plot. Okay. Oh, of course, you, what you can do also is if you have a function, it's a polynomial. You can transform the polynomial. Evaluate the polynomial with polyval, remember that? And then you simply graph. You can do that also, but much simpler is f plot. Now, guys, can we, we, we have, uh, let's do some optimization, also something that we in economics do a lot. There are three ways of optimizing, and that's uh, these are the three uh, MATLAB commands that I gave you. Let me explain what everyone does. The, the command f min bounded without the one, so the command is this one, this one, f min bounded finds the minimum of a function of a single variable, okay? F min bounded simply finds the minimum of a function of a single variable in a given interval. Got it? That's F min bounded. Now, F min search is similar to the F min bounded, but the thing is that it, it, can, it can use functions of more than one variable. So if you have X and Y, X, Y, and Z, et cetera, you use F min search. Okay, for the for, for the optimization. And F0, guys, this is command is F0, simply finds the value of the function when it crosses from negative to positive or from positive to negative. Basically, when it crosses the, the horizontal line, the X line, the X axis. Uh, can you say what the first one does? F yes. Min yeah, F min bounded, what it does is finds the minimum of a function in a given interval. Okay. okay. However, your function needs to have only one variable. X, for example, like this, like this example. The only variable that I have here is X. So this is F min bounded. Now, if you have many variables, so imagine you have X, Y, and Z, you have a function that has different, for example, here, you see, is X squared sine of Y, and you have Z value here. So more than one variable, the function to use is F min search. Okay. And the, and the last function, F zero, simply finds the value of the function when it crosses from negative to positive or positive to negative. Basically, when it crosses the x-axis. That's what F0 does. Make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, so now 
three minutes to analyze FMIN model. This is an example, guys, of what we are doing. When I say analyze, you need to do one by one, step by step, okay, and try to understand what is happening here. Three minutes to do that, guys. I will, I will stop recording, please remind me. Okay. Yeah, so this is, I will explain just original function, okay? So what we do here is remember, we have a function that corresponds to a single variable that has a single variable. So that's why we can use the command admin mounted. And what we are doing here is we're defining the function in, in apostrophes. This means basically to MATLAB, uh, this is a function. I do my F plot that is easy to do. So my F plot is going to plot my, my definition of a character here as a function in this interval. Then what I do is I find, a, well, I need to I need to run this for a minute. Sorry for this, but I need to do this. So you have the recording. So if you do the F plot, let me close all the F plots. I need to close all. Yeah, so I will run this again. So this is my function, and I'm trying to find what is the minimum value of this function in the interval 0, 5, okay? And obviously, it's very close to 4. So if we do this, if we do the f min search, f min bounded, sorry, what it will happen is will give me the value of x that makes the, where the value y is a minimum. So you can see that 3.9217 corresponds to basically a very close, a number very close to this one. Now, what we need to do is we need to find the value of y that minimizes the value of x, that, that works with the value of x. For that, what I've done, I have created a function, find of y min, y mean, that is def defined here. Simply, it computes x, x is exported as an argument here, and this takes the argument, replaces in the function, and returns the value of y. Okay, right? so if we do this, I have my y minimum. So the, the minimum of this function is located at 3.92 and 0 0.02 negative. Okay, so now let's plot this again. And what we're trying to do now is trying to find not the minimum, but, but the maximum. Now MATLAB doesn't have the capacity, not R, neither even Python. They don't have the maximum. They, they don't have a function that is explicitly for the maximum. And why they don't have the function that explicitly do the maximum? Because we know, guys, that in order, in order to simplify the maximum, what we can do is we can transform the function and convert this one here. Instead of having a maximum, this is going to be a minimum. How do we do that? We simply multiply the function by a negative. Okay, if we do that, let's take a look to what happens. Again, take a look to this function here with the original function here. So if I'm interested in finding the maximum, it's exactly the same as finding the minimum in the, in the, in the mirror image of the function, right? So once you have that, what you do is it's exactly the same as before. And then you simply compute what is the X that is gonna maximize, it's going to be 0 0.78. Then simply you find a, you want, you need to find Y, I'm using Y max, et cetera. And then you simply run and then you have it. So your maximum is going to be a 0 0.78 and Y is going to be 0 0.64. Let's take a look if it's true. 0 0.78 more or less. Yep, 0 0.78 and 0 0.664 or 644. And that's the way it works. Now going to the to the, one of the questions of your colleague is basically how MATLAB knows if you are calling this function inside a function. Well, MATLAB, as soon as it finds a function with an argument, the first thing is it will do is find if the function is defined in here. If it finds here, it solves it here. If the function is not here, what MATLAB is gonna do is gonna look for this function in the same directory as the original program, as this program here. So that's why I created another example here that's called fmin bounded two. It's exactly the same as before, but I don't have simply the functions inside the function. I have created the functions outside the function, got it? But it works exactly the same. So what MATLAB is going to do is going to find this function. Is a function inside the function? No. Nope. So I need to look for in the same directory. It will find this one here, replace the values, return the value of y. That's what we have done in the past. So we can see 
the results are exactly the same. You see the graphs, you see exactly everything. Okay, questions? Question, guys. No, I think I understand that now. Perfect. Okay, guys. So now let's take a look. This one here is, is a much shorter function, but I, I want you to take a three or five minutes maximum, analyze, check, and, and, and see what happens. Remember, F means search does exactly the same as F mean bounded, but the thing is that here you can have more, more variables. Your function can have X, Y, C, as many variables as you want. Okay? Three to five minutes, guys. One more minute, guys. One minute.
Okay, guys. So let's take a look. So I have uh, I have b. This is a vector of uh, starting values. Okay. So let's and my function is going to be defined at three bar. So three bar is a function defined here. Three bar simply is guys x squared plus two point five sine sine of y minus c squared times x squared times y squared. So I have three variables here. Do you agree? What I need to do, I need to help MATLAB or any optimizers giving them uh, starting values. And my starting values are the only thing that I need. So I need to give the starting values. And then I, I call f min search. What are we going to optimize or oh, use this function? And uh, the, the starting values are these ones here. And MATLAB is going gonna, is gonna to start creating everything and it will provide you a value of A that minimizes that where the, the minimum of the function is located. Make sense? So let's take a look to what happens here. So take a look, guys. F means search gives me immediately, provides me immediately the three values where the function is minimum. So the, the value, the function is minimum when x, c, x, e, x equals zero, y equals minus 1.57, and z equals minus 0 0.35. Now, what I'm doing in, in the next is simply, you know, I want to know what is the minimum value of the function. Got it? So what I've done is I've, I've created a function that is called eva, eval fun, and what I input is simply A. So what happens when I input A? It receives A, these are the optimal values, takes the A and simply replaces in the function and give me, give me the, the value of the, of the function evaluated at this point. Make sense? Guys, yes. Sense? Yes, it makes sense. Perfect. And so, simply, what is the minimum value of the function in that interval, uh, or around there? It's around. There is no interval here. Around the, the starting points is equal to minus two point five zero zero zero. Wait. So you said that it searches around those starting yes. points. So, yes. so okay. So it'll create a range above and below naturally. Yeah. It exactly. Exactly, but it's moving around this part here. You know, there are there is some unbounded things that can happen, and and the issue when you optimize, guys, is that you really don't know if you are finding a global maxima, a local maxima. You don't know that, you know. So that's why there are so many different ways of 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 risk of uh, what do you call it search that help you more or less understand this one here. So if you want to know more, uh, let me. Search. This has a book on options, guys. So let me let me open this one here. Here we are. You have so many different options, different different options. Okay, that I, I invite you to to explore. The technique is the same. The only thing is that you can change the method, you can change the, the algorithm, you can change the the. the uh, accuracy, etc. Make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, perfect, guys. So we understand what is F means search. So now let's do the, the final one. The X F zero. Three minutes to analyze this one here, please. While I close this one. So remember that F zero, guys. What it finds is a um, is the values uh, that crosses the x-axis, okay? Okay, let's, three minutes, uh, perhaps five minutes maximum for this one here.
Okay, guys. So let's take a look. So let's do, uh, da, 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 perhaps we can do, let's do up to here, okay? So what we are gonna be doing, guys, is F0 of the function sine close to the value of three and the cosine in the interval one and two, okay? So let's take a look at what happens here. So basically it tells you that the function, that the sine function is gonna cross the, the x-axis at 3.14, and we know that, right? Okay, and the cosine function in the interval one and two is at 157. This is pi over two, do you remember? Make sense? Let me... So you see my, my function, guys, this is my sine function. In the interval around three, so more or less around three, where it crosses the, the where it crosses the, what is the value of X where it crosses, where it crosses zero, 3.14. That's what we are finding, guys. Make sense to you? Uh, yes, that makes sense. Okay, and if you plot, for example, the cosine function, So where it crosses zero, so that it crosses zero around this point here, that is 1.57, that is half of pi, pi over two. You see that the beauty about this F plot, guys, is fantastic. In a single function, you put, you plot and you understand how, how the function is working. Okay, so now let's create a function F. What is defined my function F? My function F is defined below and it's simply X cubed minus two X minus five, that's it. Okay, I will plot that, I will do the title. And where's my graph? Here we go. It's a cubic function. Do you see that? Uh, and now what I want is where it crosses zero. We can see it crosses zero at around two point something, correct? Zero, zero. Yes. So the function is F zero of F at, at two, around two. So let's run this one here. At 2.09, it crosses zero. Take a look. 2.09, it crosses, it crosses here. Make sense to you guys? And then I can do a bunch of other things here. I, oh yeah, this is interesting. Imagine guys that you have a function uh, that has a constant, okay? Let, let me plot this one here. What I'm saying here is F plot, this is my function. My function is called my fun, and it needs two arguments. It needs k and a. The, the thing is that I need to define which one is a variable and which one is a constant. In this case, a is a constant and k is my variable. So that's why I need to tell MATLAB a, for just in case my variable is k, not a. And do this in this interval. And my fun is this one here. It's simply cosine of a times k. Got it? So if we do this stuff, Look, this is my function, guys. This is cosine of 2a, of 2x, sorry, or 2k in this case. Simply the frequency increases, right? Then I want to find where the values of, uh, where the value crosses zero at around 0 0.1. This one. Uh, when, when k equals 0 0.78. So this is pi over four. You can see. Uh, crosses zero at this point here. This point here equals 0 0.78. This point here. Make sense to you guys? Okay, so I'm recording. This is good. Make sense? Questions? I need to give you a couple of other, yeah, I need to, to give you a couple of other things, guys. And then with that, I need to talk about, uh, there is a, an additional class that you need to take, it's symbolic math, guys. I, I, I provide you already the link. It's one hour, one hour and a half, and there is an old video that reinforces that. 
that has a lot of economic examples I prepared for, for the classes is your video. Okay, so both videos, you need to watch both videos because both videos are going to give you an idea of uh, how you can apply this into economic, economic examples. Right? They are extremely well explained, so you can take a look and then you can start working on that. Also, all the M files that I use in those videos, I provided them to you today. Okay. Okay, guys. So I just wanted to confirm for the yes. F0 function, if you only have one value at the end, it does that thing where it will search around that one value. Yes. Right? Yes. But if you have two, it will search between them. In the interval. So you limit. Okay. When you have one, it will it will go everywhere until it finds it. So, you know, technically 0 0.1, it will, if it doesn't find that at one, at two, at three, or four, this can go infinite. Got it? Oh, and I see. it also can go the other side, negative, negative. If it doesn't find that, that one, one value that makes the cross a zero, it will continue exploring. When you limit the function, where, where this one here, for example, when you do between this and this, a MATLAB is going to go just from here to here. Forget about your part. Make sense? It stops um, as soon as it finds something. This one here is kind of unbounded. Make sense? So because what is close to 0 0.5, guys? Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Got it? That the program, it, it will tell you, you know what? Uh, you have iterations here. It can tell you, you know what? After 100 iterations, that's why you need to look in the F0 function also. You, I think it's 100 iterations, sorry, it's 1,000 iterations that the maximum that is allowed by default in here. But you can change that. I just want to have a hundred iterations and then it will look around hundred times. If there is no zero, it will tell you there is nothing in the, in the environment here. If you don't want to the MATLAB to be reaching in different values, what you do is you enter, you enter an interval like this. You do that. Make sense? Hey, how do you terminate the command again? Control C. Oh, no, 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 no. You, there is a limit here. You know, let's do this. Help F0. Okay, so document F0. Yeah, options. Yeah, in the options here, iterations, you see that? So there is a way in which you can put the iterations. You can ask it, it, maximum five iterations. You can say 10 iterations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Make sense to you? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Because the, the issue when you have open, so this is unbounded. If you just leave it like that and you don't tell MATLAB how many iterations it's gonna do, it, what? Well, by default, this I'm telling you is, is a thousand. So, but you're gonna wait very long time, not very long time, but a lot of time because MATLAB is trying to find something in, in the interval between um, in 1000 iterations, okay? You can tell MATLAB, you know what I want, if you don't find anything after a hundred iterations, it's stop it, stop it. But the way to avoid this type of, of, uh, of loops that make the, the program run a lot of time is simply to, to do this between this interval. If you don't find anything in this interval, okay, forget about that, there is nothing. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. But just Excellent. in general, it is control C to terminate a- Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, when you okay. have the program running, 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 and you want to stop, it's control at the same time C. You stop it, you stop the program. Okay. Okay. So now guys, the, the last part of this class, and then I, I want to talk five minutes about the exam, the, the so test. Okay, so before we move on from this um, yes, question, yes. I just wanted help with um, finding K as well, 
because on my side, um, I've been trying to run the program and this then, one, yeah. yes, and then it just, it, it doesn't run from, let's say, line 22 to line 25. Okay, so let me, let me, let me run this again, just to be sure that it runs. Sorry, I don't need this stuff. I don't need this stuff, so I want to run perfectly. Yeah, mine runs completely. Okay, so can you show me your screen very quickly? Okay. Just show me your screen, I, I want to. You have the, oh. the, the MATLAB, the last MATLAB that you download from, from the forum, right? Yes, yeah, it so says you, um, the host disabled screen sharing. Oh, sorry, yes, I need to enable you. Yep, okay, probably. Yeah, you can share now. So let's do derivatives that also we use a lot in, 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 in economics. So let's do 0, 0 0.1 to 1, for example. Um, let's create y, guys. It's going to be a vector, okay? If you can help me creating this, these numbers here. So then we're going to do a couple of things. Okay. Can we do a polyfit degree two, guys? Let's do a polyfit degree two. Okay, so let's let's call this. Uh, I want to fit this data, so I will call this P, and I want to find what is a polynomial that fits this data. So the polyfit is x y x, y, and I want a uh, degree two polynomial, agree? So what is the base polynomial degree two that fits this data? That's what I'm saying here. So this is my P. This is nine minus 9.8 x squared, 20 x minus 0 0.37. What I will do is I will evaluate the function. So I will do, let's do this in space. So let's do zero, one. So remember, if I don't do any anything else, it's 100 by definition. And what I will do is I will evaluate this one here, polyval, uh, my P using Xi. Okay, and now what I will do is I will plot it. Just to take a look at what happens. I will plot x, y. Perhaps I will do rounds. I will plot x, y just to give it a, and then x, i, z, x, i, z. And perhaps I can do this as something like that. This is what happens, guys. So my real observations are the, are the dots. My line is my, my linear interpolation. And my, my 
my function, the, yeah, it's very hard to see. The orange one, this is the, the, the best fit line for my data. Do you agree? So do you remember guys, these utility functions that we have? This looks like a utility function, do you agree? The orange one. Real data, and that's the way we build utility functions. So we observe data, we observe these dots, and then from the dots, what we try is we try to fit a function. And normally the function, utility function looks like that, like the orange, beautiful line. Got it? So now what I want to find is the derivatives of this. So what I will call is it's going to be PD equal, equals poly there. Remember, that was uh, the, way, the way we do it. I'm oh, sorry. And then what I will do is I, I will evaluate this one here. Polyval PD using XI. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, polyval. Polyval. Yep. And then I will simply plot XI and see. And here we go. Take a look. Do you remember this? This is a very famous. Oh, I delete my. Ah. Yeah, I need to do something more. Let me do the, the previous one. Yeah, my polyfeed. My polyval. And I want to plot this one here, but I want to do a figure. So now we can see. Do you remember this is a very famous micro micro function, guys? We have my utility function, do you remember? My, my utility function looks like the smooth version of this, like that. And then the, this one here is my marginal utility. Remember, it starts decreasing, 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 decreasing up to a point in, in which it crosses zero, correct? So here's exactly what we get. Well. I need to do more. I need to go perhaps to 1.5. And then we are going to see that this crosses to zero. Make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay, um, can guys. I just see your poly dare, the derivative yes, command one more time? Uh, here we go. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's talk a couple of minutes about the, the final PhD stuff, and then we, we talk about the final. So I will provide you tonight, guys, or, or tomorrow, the, the seventh assignment. And the seventh assignment, guys, is it is nothing more than the final project. Okay, and the final project simply tells you, create a program. You know that best fits your 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 ideas, your projects, whatever you can whatever you can do. If you want more economic examples, there are beautiful examples. We need a symbolic mathematics, and this is a a, a non synchronous class that I, I already sent to you. Okay, you have two classes. You have an, sorry two videos. One that is symbolic mathematics, and the other one that deals with economic models. There is one complete hour of uh, you know a lot of economic models I developed for you. I send you the, the text. So I, I send you, I think, uh, Alpha Shan uh, models, uh, economic models. So you have the readings. You can also develop the models in MATLAB. They are already, you have already the M files. And once you have these two things, guys, you are able to, to basically run and see how the models work. Got it? So what I want in the final exam, what I want in a final, it's not exam, in the final project, guys, is that you show me that you have learned to program, so I, I don't want you to be complex in the in the in the economic or financial model. What I want you to show me is, you know, what I know how to read data, I know how to collect data, how to select data from a matrix, I know how to filter, you know, I know how to do graphs, I know how to do subplots, I know how to do, a, you know, some functions that do that call another functions. You see, that's what I want. Is I you. You do whatever you can imagine, do whatever. I had students that have done price discrimination in airline industry. I have students that have done, um, one of my students did what we did. Do you remember uh, the ones have taken um, financial economics with me? Do you remember portfolio optimization? 
I had one of my students developing the complete portfolio optimization that we did in class. Complete, you know, step by step, he completed that. That was beautiful. I have another student that have done the CAPE model, the capital asset pricing model. I have students that have created, you know, very fancy models related to the, the PhD research. It's up to you. Okay, it's up to you. So when is the, the deadline? Let me show you the deadline, guys, because that's important. So we have from now up to 28 of, uh, you have two weeks to create your, your, your project. Now, there is a intermediate deadline. The 21st, I need to have every single, every single uh, assignment, every single homework needs to be delivered on the 21st. Okay, so what I do is I receive a lot of assignments. Uh, Steve and I receive almost all yours, but what I would love, please, this is gonna help me. If you can on the 21st, Okay, please take note because that's what I will do. The 21st between 10 to 12, okay, 10 in the morning to 12 at noon, you need to send me, everyone needs to send me one single file, eh, sorry, one single email with all your files, with all your homeworks. And the, the, the homeworks, guys, need to be named in the following way. It's gonna be a homework, I'm sorry, homework one, Your surname. Dot whatever. If if you have a word, if you have XLS, you have M files, you have everything. But this should be the the way. Okay. In a single uh, sorry, no, not word, etc. So don't don't do PDF because what I do is normally. I go to your file, copy paste, I do the, the MATLAB. I test if it works in, in MATLAB. If you're using data, you need to provide me with the data. And if you're using the M files, you need to provide me with the M file that I can upload to MATLAB and run. Make sense? Wait, so you want us to, sorry, can you just put that, that back? The... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oopsie. Yeah. So you want us to, okay. So you want us com to combine all the homework into just one single file? No, 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 no. per homework, in the, not in a single file. You can have, for example, homework, you can have a, yeah. You can have a document, a Word document. Also, you can have an Excel file, etc. So basically I want to say this, homework one, okay? Then you need to do the same for homework. Too, all your data, but the first one needs to have. I need to identify your name in the file, in the name file. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all. And then homework three, homework four, in a single email, please. So for the twenty, for the twenty, for the twenty-first. So in a week, I need to have all your assignments. And then on the twenty-eighth, okay. On the 28th, I need to have only the, the seven assignments. 21st is from one to six, and 28th, the, the last assignment. That is uh, the final project. Make sense to you? Yes. Okay, guys, questions? You know, send me emails if you have questions or doubts, and then we can we can work on that. Now uh, we are. You know what? What uh, I was talking with uh, with one of my colleagues. I prefer to have individual assignments. You know, one every individual created an assignment, but if you want to do something more complex, more robust, you can work up to groups of two. You just need to just need to let me know. Okay, so the seventh assignment is the only one that you can work in, in groups of two. Now, I prefer to have you working individually because it is better to press yourselves, but if you want to do something more complex or more, more, more interesting that requires the, the effort of two people, okay, I'm, I'm happy and, and, and I'm willing to accept that. But you need to make me know, let me know by early next week, please. If you decide to work in groups of two, you need to let me know, let's say by 19 or 20 maximum, okay? Make sense? Okay. 
Okay, so if you need anything, guys, just shoot me an email and perhaps we can do a Zoom if you want around there, it's, it's okay. But uh, what I recommend you is if you can do this weekend or this week, do the, the next two videos because they are really interesting. They are really powerful and all the things that you can do with symbolic mathematics, etc. It's very simple also. And, and, the, and, the, mo and the, the videos have a lot of examples, a lot of examples. You have the M code, you have everything to be able to be up and ready for that. Got it? So what I will do is I will record this one. I will ask uh, to upload this in the, into, the, into YouTube and we're going to be ready to go, guys. Okay? I, I imagine I will see you soon in um, regular classes, guys. So it was a pleasure teaching you. Uh, as, as I mentioned, this is, uh, programming is gonna put you in a, in a completely different level. Okay, you are regular guys, other guys that really understand economics, they can do the mathematics, optimization, etc. But you're going to be above the, the crowd if you know how to program. And, and programming is, is very rewarding. You wanna see, if, uh, Tiffany, you are doing the PhD, you wanna see how useful is programming. And guys, if you go to the industry, you can use MATLAB seriously. You can use a lot of techniques on using MATLAB or any other coding program. Got it? It was a pleasure, guys, to. Well, I, I know you, I know every one of you, but it was a pleasure to teach you again. Anything that you want, you just write me an email and we'll